Good day, everyone. Welcome to our Fisheries Professionals Licensure Examination Review. This review is intended for those fisheries graduates and students who will take the fisheries board exam. In this video, we are going to respond to some possible board exam questions. But before we proceed, if you like this video, don't forget to subscribe and click the notification bell to get notified when we upload new videos. So let us start. Question number one. When does post-harvest fisheries start? A. At the time when fish are processed. B. At the time when fish are landed at fishing ports. C. At the time when fish are caught by fishermen. Or D. All of the above. The correct answer for this question is letter C, at the time when fish are caught by fishermen. For this question, we can easily get the answer from the prefix, from the prefix word post, meaning after. We all know that after or once the fish are out or removed from the water, it will suffocate and, start, and starts to die. After its death, it undergoes a complex and intricate variations which, if we fail to delay this scenario, it will lead to spoilage or deterioration of our fish. And in order to prevent this from happening, we need post-harvest fisheries immediately once the fish are caught in order to lengthen the shelf life. This can be done either by icing, freezing, salting, drying, smoking, pickling, or canning. Number 2 these are the measures taken and observed at the post-harvest fisheries facility to prevent the transmission of infectious diseases to the products, fish processors, and on the equipment. These are known as A. Hygiene B. Cleanliness C. Sanitation or D. Safety precautions Letter A is the answer for this question. Hygiene. Hygiene is a term we can refer to the things we do regularly to maintain our health, such as taking a bath, proper hand washing before working, and after going to the toilet, and many more. According to Ng and Low 1992, as cited by Hermes 2004, hygiene is a science of good health that signifies cleanliness and freedom from the risk of infectious diseases. Meanwhile, the term cleanliness is pertaining to the absence of, of unwanted matter such as food residues, dirt, grease, and others in the processing plant. Sanitation is a process of reducing number of living microorganisms in the processing plant to a level judged safe by public health authorities. While safety precautions are measures or actions we need to be taken in advance to protect us against from possible danger, failure, or injury. This can be done by using personal protective equipment, removal of accessories, disposal of waste properly, using a right tool for the right tests, and others. Next, question number three. Which of the following has the highest percentage of edible portion? Which of the following has the highest percentage of edible portion? A. Round scud. B. Blue swimming crab. C. Shrimp alamang. Or D. Sleeper oyster. For this question, if you forget to review the table of approximate composition of some Philippine aquatic products from the book of Hermes 2004, all you need to do is imagine. Imagine which among the choices has the most edible portion. So, among the given choices, shrimp alamang has a greater edible portion. All of its parts can be eaten, compared with round scud with 49% edible portion, blue swimming crab having 34% edible portion, and sleeper oyster with 12%. Number 4. How long is the storage time of milkfish on ice? How long is the storage time of milkfish on ice? A. 
8 days, B. 14 days, C. 21 to 27 days, or D. 5 to 6 days. How long is the storage time of milkfish on ice? The answer is the letter B, 14 days. For 8 days storage time, we have crab, mussels, and mullet. For 21 to 27 days, we have the tilapia or oreochromis nulaticus. And for 5 to 6 days, we have oil sardines. Number 5. This scenario happens when a fish undergoes a complex and intricate variation after death. This is known as A. Rigor mortis B. Postmortem C. Putrefaction or D. Autolysis This scenario happens when a fish undergoes a complex and intricate variation or variation after death. The answer is letter B, post-mortem. Fish starts to die as soon as they are out of the water. Then, various changes in them occur, and this scenario is known as post-mortem. The first post-mortem stage that will happen is a change of color of fish gills, skin, and the flesh start to fade after death. Then later on, it undergo stiffening of the body, which is known as rigor mortis followed by autolysis or the self-breakdown or digestion of fish by the enzymes. And lastly, the putrefaction wherein the fish are already spoiled. This stage is characterized by bacterial enzyme action. Next is number 6. One teaspoon of refined salt is equal to blank grams. One teaspoon of refined salt is equal to blank grams. A. 5 B. 10 C. 15 or D. 20 1 teaspoon of refined salt is equal to blank grams. The answer for this question number 6 is the letter A, 5 grams. You can find more conversion measurements on the Book of Hermes 2004 at the Appendix A conversion table. Please be familiar with those. Next is number 7. Direction of rigor progression in fish. Direction of rigor progression in fish. A. Head to tail. B. Tail to head, C. Outer to center, or D. Center to outer. Direction of rigor progression in fish. The answer is letter B. Tail to head. We all know that rigor mortis is the progressive stiffening of the muscle of fish after death. Rigor progression usually starts from the tail to the head and the whole body becomes hard and stiff. This stage usually occurs within 1 to 3 hours or more depending on the various factors such as the size of the fish, species, catching method, handling of fish, temperature, and many more. Any delay in rigor will therefore prolong the keeping time of the fish. Number 8. What happens if the fish undergoes autolysis? What happens if the fish undergoes autolysis? A. The fish muscles and tissues will become soft and weak. B. The fish muscles will become stiff. C. The fish will be spoiled and the tissues will be decomposed. Or D. The fish flesh will start to fade.
what happens if the fish undergoes autolysis? The answer for this question is letter A. The fish muscles and tissues will become soft and weak. Autolysis is a post-mortem stage characterized by enzymatic action. It establishes the state of freshness or spoilage of our fish and can be measured by K volume. At this stage, we notice the self-breakdown and self-digestion of fish result in a weakening, softening, and discoloration of fish tissues. Temperature is very important to the rate of self-digestion. Therefore, keeping the fish at a low temperature just above freezing point is needed to lengthen the shelf life. Let's proceed with number 9. Enzymes are chemical substances found in the flesh and digested tract of fish. They are useful to live fish because they help in the digestion and conversion of food into waste. But they are harmful when the fish die because they continue to digest their tissues, which cause them to soften and disintegrate. Therefore, how can we control enzymes? 1. By heating above boiling temperature through canning. 2. By freezing at negative 2.2 degrees Celsius or 28 degrees Fahrenheit or lower. 3. By removing the scales, gills, and viscera before chilling. 4. By boiling or simmering at low temperature. A. One only. B. One and two. C. One, two, and three. D. One, two, three, and four. The answer is letter C. Enzymatic activity can be stopped by heating and can be controlled to a large degree by other methods such as chilling, freezing, salting, drying, frying, marinating, and many others. Number 10. How many percent of collagen do bony fishes have? How many percent of collagen do bony fishes have? A. 3. B. 8. C. 16. D. 20. How many percent of collagen do bony fishes have? For this question, the answer is letter A, 3%. Bony fish contain about 3% of collagen, while cartilaginous fish contain about 16%. Collagen is a type of protein that can be also found in fish. It plays important role in cellular processes including tissue repair, immune response, cellular communication, and migration. Number 11. Which of the following bacteria is are present in the pink and reddening of salted fish? Which of the following bacteria is are present in the pink and reddening of salted fish? 1. Wallemia genus. 2. Pseudomonas alinaria. 3. Clostridium botulinum. 4. Sarcina litularis. A. 1 only. B. 2 only. C. 1 and 3. Or D. 
2 and 4. The answer for this question is letter D. Sudomona salinaria and Sarsina litularis. These two groups of halophilic bacteria are most often caused pink originating on salted fish. According to Tanikawa 1971, as cited by Hermes 2004, these organisms are found in almost all new solar salt or other salt prepared from sea water. Meanwhile, Wallinia genus is a mold that is responsible for the tan or to the brown spot or phone spot on assaulted products. And the Clostridium botulinum is a bacteria that are common to improperly processed canned products. Let's proceed with number 12. Fish products which are canned in tomato sauce are classified in what group? Fish products which are canned in tomato sauce are classified in what group? A. Low acid B. Medium acid C. High acid or D. None of these The answer to this question is letter B, medium acid. For canning purposes, we may classify our products into three groups, high acid, medium acid, and low acid. For high acids, these are canned products with a pH below 4.5, such as fish marinades and pickles. For medium acids, these groups have a pH 4.5 to 5.3. Fish canned in tomato sauce is classified in this group. A full sterilization process is needed for these products to destroy the Clostridium botulinum spore for safe storage. And lastly, the low acid. These are canned products with a pH level above 5.3. Most canned fish are classified in this group, which has a close to neutral pH. Similar to medium groups, Low acid can products require a full heat sterilization process. Number 13. Aling Pasinko is a fish processor dealing with the canning of fishery products. She utilizes glass jars as her containers. During the process, she always allocated one half inch of heat space to the glass jars, and after she completed the process, she always inverted the jars. So, why is she always inverting the glass jars after completing the canning process instead of leaving them in an upright position to cool? A. To check if any of her glass jars had leak. B. To make sure the containers were properly sealed. C. To see if the products are contaminated with foreign substances. Or D, to check if the bubbles in their glass jars are still flowing. The answer for this question is letter B, to make sure the containers were properly sealed. Inverting the glass jars after the canning process is a technique done by some of the fish canning processors after sealing and during the cooling process in order to check if the containers were properly sealed or not. Number 14. Which of the following is our characteristic of good quality fish paste? Which of the following is our characteristic of good quality fish paste? 1. Cheesy odor. 2. Placing taste, not biting, sour, or very salty. 3. Ash to reddish in color. 4. Not watery consistency.
A, one only. B, one, two, and three. C, one and three only. Or D, one, two, three, and four. The answer is letter D. Fish paste in the Philippines is locally known as Bagoong, and the Bagoong capital of the Philippines is the municipality of Lingayen, Pangasinan. Fish paste is one of the popular condiments or seasonings that is made from whole or ground fish, fish raw, shrimp, or shellfish with salt added to it. Bagoong is allowed to ferment for periods varying from a few weeks to more than a year. Good quality fish paste have the following characteristics. Cheesy odor and slightly fishy. The fish is either partially or completely disintegrated. Pasty and at watery consistency. Ash to reddish in color. Free from foreign materials, sand and others. And have pleasing taste, not biting, bitter, sour, or very salty. So, for this question, the answer is letter D. 1, 2, 3, and 4. And last, number 15. What are the two additives needed in making a semi-processed means fish protein? What are the two additives needed in making a semi-processed means fish protein? A salt and vinegar b sugar and salt c salt and polyphosphate or d sugar and polyphosphate the answer for this question is letter d sugar and polyphosphate. In making semi-processed means fish protein, such as sorimi, the two additives needed are sugar and polyphosphate. The recommended level of sugar in sorimi is 3 to 5 percent, while the polyphosphate level should not exceed 0 0.3 percent. These two additives are added to the products to reduce protein denaturation brought about by the freezing procedure and to enhance the water holding capacity, respectively. Okay, so that ends our review questions. I hope you learned a lot from this video. See you in the next session. Thank you.